welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. Hello, how's it going? Yeah, it, just, it, didn't, <laughs> it doesn't do it, man. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> can't do the NPR voice anymore. No. Nope. You got to get in real close to the mic and maintain a monotone. Um, no, I ain't got it. But that's it's just as well. We don't want to bore our listeners to death. <laughs> yeah. We, we want to acquire listeners, not drive them away. <laughs> not put them to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Drive them to NPR. Yeah. Um, so what was you saying about Rittenhouse, the... The liquor, not the okay. individual. <laughs> yeah. So um, those of you that have been listening for a while, we used to announce what we were drinking uh, at the beginning of the podcast. And, and in fact, this was almost uh, a, a small batch whiskey review podcast instead of the, the great libertarian podcast that you're listening to now. It was in discussion anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. It was in the front. <laughs> yeah. It, it would have had a different name. And over time, I just can't really afford to keep stepping up uh, with <laughs> Buying that stuff. new bottles. Especially yeah. in, a, in a state with a centrally controlled liquor board where you can't even get everything. Well, so, and yeah. that's the big thing is like, yeah, just getting access down here can be difficult. Mm-hmm. It's amazing going to some other states where it's like, man, like y'all have this all the time. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like shelves full of stuff that I wait months to to see. To get, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, no, Rittenhouse Rittenhouse Rye Whiskey is one of my favorites. It is a very inexpensive and excellent rye whiskey. Oh, I love it! Like um, it's it's one of my top. Like yeah. Now it's a, a distillery in um, Pennsylvania. It's like 150 years old. Oh, wow. uh, it's been acquired by Heaven Hill or Heavenly Hill, Heaven Hill. I don't remember. Right. Anyway, um, I'll. <laughs> And my story about Heaven Hill or Heavenly Hill or whatever is I used to have this roommate who uh, would binge drink. Um, and he, from time to time, let yeah. me specify, like, yeah. you know. Um, and But what he would do is he would drink until he passed out or, like, well, threw up many times and then passed out. And then he would wake up and start drinking again. Um, but this one particular night up in, in college, uh, he had a bottle of Heaven Hill rum. Oh, yeah. And um, he was trashed and running around to everybody uh, uh, like practically forcing them to drink to rum you know <laughs> have yeah. some rum <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh so just like i have this picture in my head still of you know one of these scenes with him going up and like force feeding um this girl uh, that i knew up there rum uh, just like a shot. I mean, she took it. It's not like yeah. he, you know, no one like he opened her mouth and poured it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was very <laughs> insistent, and and then her face after she <laughs> takes the shot out of the bottle. It the whole thing is very funny to me. Um. Anyway, that company owns Rittenhouse now. Okay. And apparently, um, although Rittenhouse is a not a very well known, um. Whiskey, yeah. I don't Anytime think. I introduce it to people, they're always like, I've never heard of this. I'm like, dude, it's affordable and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's always my pitch. <laughs> yeah. And and we've certainly had it on this podcast oh, many, many times. Many times. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, apparently people discovered it after Kyle Rittenhouse was... Um, acquitted. Or, yeah, acquitted. Yeah. And, uh, and they were drinking it in celebration. Yeah. They're drinking the Rittenhouse rye in celebration of the Rittenhouse trial yeah. ending in uh, in a way that they Se- approved of. Seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. Well, and I almost proposed it actually, <laughs> yeah. like for the podcast, but uh, yeah. we just don't actually drink that much on the, no, podcast, on the anymore. podcast anymore. Well, yeah. we start a lot earlier too. That uh, has a lot to do with <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's different when you start drinking at 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, um, right. And, and I'm one of those that whenever I start that I keep drinking until I go to bed. So right. usually the earlier I, you start, the more you drink. Yeah. Right? Like I, I try not to have my first drink until after dinner, like some time after dinner. So like seven thirty, eight o'clock, I have time for one drink and then I go to bed. There you go. Um, maybe two. Yeah. Uh, if I start drinking at four o'clock, I will have, you know, more anyway, <laughs> yeah, definitely <exactly>. more <laughs> before I go to bed. And that's probably not healthy. Yeah. Um, at any rate, Rittenhouse Rye put out a statement about people drinking their whiskey uh, to celebrate the, the Rittenhouse acquittal. How'd they feel about it? Um, they, they were somewhat opposed. 
some of the post. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's um, a fine line to walk for them, though. Like, the yeah, best thing they can do is. is just stay out of it. Yeah, well, what they should have done is, um, you know, uh, we're really glad that you found our whiskey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like, the most neutral thing they can do, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, although, you know, although we are not associated with Kyle Rittenhouse or anything, we are uh, we hope that you're enjoying our booze. Yeah. I, that's, yeah. Um, but no, what they said was uh, that they... Um, you know, that it was a tragic event with and loss of life and blah, blah, blah. I, I mean, I can't remember exactly what it was. I just remember mm-hmm. thinking, like, why would you even say anything? Like, the <laughs> yeah, like what you said is worse than just nothing, like, yeah, than <laughs> saying nothing at all. Just be yeah. happy that you got a boost in sales and right? yeah. be done with it, yeah. And um, hope those people stick around because they probably will. Yeah, <laughs> like well, they, maybe not after they, that statement. Well, maybe though. not after that statement, <laughs> though. But, like, yeah, if they had just kept their mouth shut, though, mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's a really good whiskey. Like, a lot of people may come back. Yeah, it was a three-part tweet. I, I don't remember yeah. exactly what all it said. And I'll be honest with you, though. Like, I say people may drink it and continue to like it or whatever, mm-hmm. but the truth is they're probably mixing it with Coke anyway, so they don't know oh, the difference. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the truth of the matter. Is, yeah. yeah, if you're if you're mixing it with Coke, go drink Jack Daniels. Yeah, you might as well, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I like Jack Daniels, but like, uh-huh. but Jack Daniels is a mixing whiskey, though. Yeah, in my mind, this is suddenly turning into a whiskey review it's, podcast it's because, again. Yeah, we're we're gonna end up down a huge rabbit hole here. You started it, man. <laughs> no, you told me to. You you I asked again. Was, I just thought it was an interesting side note. It wasn't something that I hadn't planned to present on the podcast, or yeah. I would have had the tweet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I um, did think it was interesting, given that we discussed all of this on the last podcast. So yeah. It's relevant. Well, um, something that we didn't discuss on the last podcast, uh, or, I mean, I, I guess we only just Kind of like, just in passing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that I'd like to spend just a little bit more time on here is just the idea of a citizen's arrest. Yeah. Um, and... Now, with the the Georgia law, it essentially says this is related to the Arbery case, um, uh, for which the those men were, I think, rightly convicted of murder. Yeah. Um, but the what they were trying to do is execute a citizen's arrest, and because they suspected that Ahmad Arbery was involved in some robberies that had occurred in the area. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, they just suspected that Ahmad Arbery was well, involved in and, some robberies in the area. Yeah, and that's the problem. And that's the reason that the verdict was, I felt like, was correct. Is mm-hmm. like they didn't have any evidence. Like it's, and it, it would have been different situation if he had been running down the street with a bunch of power tools in his hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I true. mean, there there may would be some reason to ask some questions to that guy. You yeah, know? maybe we need to stop him and find mm-hmm. out exactly what he's doing and where he's going. <laughs> yeah. So like the worst case scenario, he's trespassing, and this is something yeah. that was brought up to me at the very beginning of this case. Um, which I, I hadn't really thought about in this way because we used to walk around the neighborhood and stop in uh, construction sites I, and like go in and look at floor plans and uh, you know see how things were being put together and so forth and it was like a learning experience when I was younger like how yeah. a house is built you know yeah. um, and that's pretty cool like I spent a lot of time on construction sites as a kid but mm-hmm. as a trespasser just like as a well, kid not with my parents like looking yeah. at floor plans just running up and down the stairs of a newly like yeah. <laughs> middle of a house being built you know? well and the, I think the last time I was in a um, construction site was at a, a, a college of mine um, where I was wandering late at night and it was cold and I was but I was just wandering around the construction site and I just so happened to find a pair of gloves which was exactly what I needed at that time um, and I will stop that story there yeah all right <laughs> um, but anyway I and so this is actually but it's it's property that doesn't belong to you yeah I mean, and I hadn't really thought about it that way yeah. before I just to me yeah. it was an unoccupied area under construction you know and it was just like it, it wasn't in my head, it wasn't anybody's. Yeah, y- you yet. were. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like very different to me to like walk into somebody's house than to walk into a, a house under construction. Yeah. But um, you know, I realize now that no, it does belong to somebody. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's and you not don't have a, you don't have a right to be there. Yeah, like I mean, it's um, yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. I guess the, the, there's people in this country that do that and people in this country that think that that's way out of line. And I used to be somebody who did that kind of thing, and now I feel like it is probably out of line. Yeah. Um, and 
you know, but I haven't been on a construction site since college, well, <laughs> 20, 25 years or something. Yeah. I mean, um, I couldn't even tell you the last time other than actually probably the last time I was on a construction site was when my parents built the house they live in now, <laughs> yeah, which was yeah. like a well, long time years. ago. <laughs> yeah. We're talking like 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but anyway, the, uh, the Georgia law says that, uh, you can execute a citizen's arrest if you have firsthand knowledge of the crime committed uh, by the person you're stopping. Yeah. Um, now, to me, that essentially means that you're a witness to it. Yeah. Like, you, you saw them commit a crime, and then you are uh, allowed to stop the person and hold them um, until police arrive. Yeah. And so, um, the, the question, I guess, for us is, like, how do libertarians feel about citizen's arrest? Yeah. And... The answer is that I, I think um, I, I'm speaking for myself here. You can argue with me if. Well, if, you I'm know. curious to see what you have to say. Um, yeah. Is that absolutely I agree with citizens' arrest because I don't think that there should be a government entity that's doing law enforcement anyway. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm kind of good with what, what the law says. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't I don't think you have the right to just stop somebody on the street because you suspect them of doing a crime, which is yeah. what happened in this case. Right. Um but I do think if you catch somebody in the act of a crime, you absolutely you have not an you have a duty mm -hmm. to like step in especially if you're in a situation where you can you can stop them. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, whether or not you're a big enough guy that they're not going to that you can stop them or if mm -hmm. you're carrying a gun or something. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Now, don't put yourself in danger. Yeah. No. And right. that's what—that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is like yeah. if if you're a little scrawny dude and there's some big dude like clearly shoplifting or taking something, like maybe that yeah. ain't the time for you to step in. Just call somebody. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to stop the crime in the midst of it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's basically what you're what you're talking about. Like somebody mm -hmm. breaks onto your property, like you pull a gun on well, them and hold them. That's. Yeah, but that's defending your own property is a different thing, though. Also, yeah, I think, yeah, um, like every state allows you to defend your own well, yeah, property. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not so, every state, I don't think, allows citizens arrest, citizen arrest. Uh, yeah. for if you've witnessed a crime, you can detain somebody until see, police arrive. And see, I think, but I think <coughs> of the two in the same way, though. Like, I yeah. mean, because if you see a crime, even if it's not on your property, mm -hmm. like I still see you having a duty to step yeah. in and. No, I agree. I think that you have a duty to defend others as well as a duty to defend yourself. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that includes property. Yeah. I, so I, I do, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, we could go on from there, of course, like what happens next if you don't have, like, if you don't have a police force, if you don't have a government controlled law yeah. enforcement system. Yeah. Um, well, then it would be community enforced. Uh, there's always going to be something that steps in. Like there was, yeah. there were um, trials or juries or judges or whatever for, from time immemorial. Yeah. Um, so, you know, presumably like in my homeowners association, there would be some council. Yeah. That you would take yeah. this person to. And there would probably be some security group that had been hired to provide security that yeah. you could contact to come pick this person up until they can be and put them in their jail. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. Well, see, but that's where you start running into some weird questions, right? Yeah. Like, um, because that, I mean, with the, if you hire the security company, the security company is not necessarily going to have a jail to put them in, mm -hmm. and it may not. Depending, I on bet the they crime. have some kind of detention area. That yeah, they're, they're almost certainly going to. In the absence of a police force, well, in the absence of a police force, they would absolutely mm -hmm. have somewhere. And you would probably really have like quick, um, you know, judgment in those cases too. Yeah. Unlike our existing government oh, legal yeah, system, where, where like, you you're going to spend, spend years. years in jail yeah. just trying to. <clears throat> As an waiting innocent, for your yeah, trial, waiting for your time in court, yeah. yeah. Um, which is uh, you know another reason to try and push away from that kind of thing. And yeah. okay, so this is, and this is somewhat related, and and I guess like part of what people don't understand about our view on the world is that we don't give government a special place. Yeah, like morality applies to everybody equally. So if you or I can't do something, then we don't think the government can do it just because they're the government. Like they're just as beholden to, to basic to morality, morality as, yeah. as the rest of us. Yeah. So if you and I can't, you know, 
catch somebody and put them in our basement until we think that they've you know done enough time, then neither can the government. Exactly. Um, and uh, so, but I was thinking about this is this is one of those podcasts that's going to be all over the it's, place. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> yeah. um, and we haven't been drinking, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but uh, so I've been thinking about this uh, some this week because I was thinking about writing an article about it. And if I talk about it on the podcast, then I don't have to write an article. <laughs> or maybe it helps me. Or maybe this will like, help you flesh out the article. Yeah. <laughs> um, either way, uh, I was thinking about, because this came up with somebody, I was talking with somebody at work about um, the various lockdowns and mandates and, and so forth. Yeah. And um, like what the limit is. Yeah. Okay. So this person approves of a lot of this stuff. Like, okay, well, you don't have um, a uh, a vaccination, then um, you can't fly on a plane. Yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> um, it, you yeah. know, my, why why, not, why is my freedom to travel restricted? Well, it's not your freedom to travel. It's just your freedom to travel in certain ways. Well, that would be true if there were alternative airlines. If yeah. the airlines were making their decision, that would be one thing. Yeah. Um, because there would probably be airlines that would say. Okay, if you're not vaccinated, we don't care on this flight. So if you yeah. don't care about vaccination status, you can fly with us. Yeah. Well, and but it, you bring up an interesting point as far as okay, so what would be where where is the line drawn? So okay, you can't fly on a plane, but can I ride a bus? Well, what about a taxi cab? Like, can I get a cab? Like, where where do you draw the line when you talk about going to restrict people's access because of a vaccine. If I have to drive, am I allowed to stop at a rest area? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's that's interesting for the people who support <laughs> these type of rules is like, okay, well, how far are you willing to go? And we've yeah. seen it in some other countries, mm -hmm. just how far they're willing to push some of this. Like, yeah. I mean, it hasn't been, well, we're in the South, so we haven't really, we hadn't dealt with this in a while now. <laughs> yeah. But, but there are parts of the world where, like, they're seriously locking people like in hotels and crap. Mm -hmm. um, did you hear uh, the Australian stuff? Yes, yeah. yes. So I mean, yeah. like I just I don't know, man. Like where where do you draw the line though? Well, and that and that becomes a personal question, which goes back to the point, right? Because yeah. so what I was asking this person is, uh, um, it's hard to do this without gender, so I make sure that I don't out this person. Yeah, <laughs> um, but has a child. Yeah. Uh, an adult child. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, there, how, how long would you have gone without seeing your child if they hadn't developed vaccines and so forth? Yeah. Like how long? And the response was, well, we decided that, that, you know, we wanted to be safe. And so we made a mutual decision not to see each other. I said, okay, yeah, fine. But yeah. what if they hadn't developed vaccines? Like, how long what would if we you were have gone? Yeah, what if we were still living in, yeah. like, the 2020 reality? Yeah, like, would, will you, would you have gone two years at this point without seeing your child? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, um, and so, of course, the, you know, the answer was that they have seen each other. Well, we've, we've all been vaccinated, we wore masks, we you know, maintain some level of distancing. And I even like, you know, added a, a couple of extra wrinkles. I said, okay, so what if, um, you were no danger to your child, Yeah. but your child could be a danger to you. Yeah. Would you have been okay with not seeing them? Yeah. Like Probably, yeah. now you're <laughs> the only person you're risking is yourself. Like how long would you go before you're willing to take that risk to see your child again? Yeah. You yeah. know, um, and these kind of questions. And so, uh, and actually I guess they hadn't been vaccinated when they, the first time they saw each other. Oh, yeah. Um, and you know, but they wore masks. Uh, they, uh, did most of their activities outside. Of course they were staying under the same roof at some yeah. point, like they were sleeping under the same roof. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they tried to maintain social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. I said, yeah. So, but you knew that there was a risk there, right? Well, yeah. yes. And you were willing to and accept you, that risk for the purposes of seeing your child. Yeah. 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 Like this one thing was important enough to you to, to take the risk to do it. Yeah. So why do you get to make that decision for yourself and everybody else? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the point that people just don't seem to understand. Yeah. Um, that everybody has to make their own risk assessment. And why do we all have to adhere to the one that you made? 
Yeah, yeah. Or the one that the government made. Because right, that's, that's yeah, even worse. Yeah. I, I mean, you're mostly when you're in these uh, kind of debates with people, it's people that are, approve of what the government's doing. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> So it wouldn't matter if the government was mandating or not. They would still want that's this kind of thing. That's what they want, yeah. 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 Um, and, and that's why you bring it up. And so I guess I, I can avoid talking about what my potential article, because we, we came at it at a different angle in the end anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, the question, um, which is that uh, essentially that, you know, whatever you choose is your way of living in the world as it is. Um, why do you get to impose that on the people that disagree with you? Yeah, yeah. Which is the reason this country is so divided the way it is anyway. Yeah. Is, and we talk about it all the time, but it's the truth. is like different parts of this country are just different, mm -hmm. you know? And, and back to the, you know, the government not being different in terms of morality. Yeah. Um, w bringing it back around to the flight stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you are afraid of flying, and I I went through the same stuff with that person as I did on the podcast last week. That you are not safe <laughs> with your mask on yeah. and the HEPA filters in a plane. Yeah, uh, like yeah. none of that stuff does anything. Yeah. Um. But uh, because you because you feel better, um, safer, etc. Uh. With this these particular mandates. Um, well, why do you get to say that because I don't follow your approach to this, that I can't fly? Yeah. And, you know, the answer is most of the time, well, I'm not making that decision. The government is. Yeah. And the response and then the, re the reason I bring this up is because if you can't make that decision, neither can the government. Yeah. That would be the libertarian position. Oh, absolutely. If it's immoral for you to keep me off of a flight, it is yeah. immoral for the government to keep me off of a flight. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I also tried to define some differences, you know. Uh, okay, if you don't want me in your office or your home, yeah. that's your space. That's your property. Yeah. All right. You're perfectly yes. within your rights to prevent me from entering your property. Absolutely. But it is not moral for you to prevent me from exiting mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. These are not the same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, whether it's public property or somebody else's property, you have no moral right to stop me. Yeah. Um, just because you disagree with my decisions. Yeah. Or because you don't feel safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, gosh, we keep going around to this. May as well hit the Omicron stuff. Yeah, yeah. So A, a little bit. So we didn't really point. know anything at, during the last podcast. It had just yeah. like became hit the news when we recorded. So well, I'll tell you the first thing that I saw earlier this week um, was uh, people arguing over where where it started, yeah. and it wasn't like no, no, it came from South Africa. No, no, it came from somewhere. It didn't come from us. It came from somewhere else. It was the Netherlands saying, no, we were the first place to have the Omicron variant. <laughs> they were trying to claim it. <laughs> they were trying to claim it. I, wow, that's oh, wow. bizarre. Um, and uh, But here's here's essentially my summary. So now it's come to the U.S. Yeah, right? I heard you that today. You have your first confirmed yeah. case in the U.S. Yeah. And um, so this is this is the way the story seems to go. We have our first confirmed case in the U.S. Yep. Um, yes, the the person who in the U.S. who brought it over from South Africa, uh, they have been double vaccinated. Ooh. So now it is more important than ever that we all get vaccinated. <laughs> Even though, yeah. No, like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> where's the logic in that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, uh, Fauci was asked about this and Fauci's reply was, well, they didn't have their they hadn't had their booster. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the <laughs> that will that that seals it. Then we got we all got to go get our shots. Then yeah, like, you know, yeah. That's I, I <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't even know how to address this at this point to the people that are still on board. Yeah. Like, how can you tell me um, the only person that's been infected in the United States was double vaccinated, and so therefore, in order to protect ourselves, we all need to be vaccinated? Yeah. Well. That person was vaccinated. Didn't protect them, <laughs> right? Like, um, and and of course, you still have the things where they're coming out. They're saying you uh, you are just as likely to get it, yeah. um, but it probably won't be as severe, yeah. um, and you're just as likely to spread it. 
So, a so certain... why do you have to have a hundred percent uptake? Yeah. The only person that, that, if you are vaccinated, you are as safe as you're going to be. Yeah. I, let's just throw that out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because other people around you being vaccinated isn't affecting you at all. Yeah. Like whether they are or they aren't, like you don't, they don't have, they can still spread it to you whether they're mm-hmm. vaccinated or not. Yeah. So, and that's where this all, to me, that's where it all falls apart. Mm-hmm. Like if, if there's, if the getting the vaccine doesn't prevent you from spreading it, then there's no reason to be concerned whether somebody else is vaccinated or not. Yeah. Just because you're me- just because I didn't take your medicine don't mean your medicine isn't going to mm-hmm. work. <laughs> yeah. We all make our own risk assessments. Like we talk about uh, motorcycles a lot. Yeah. Right. Like motorcycles is, a, I think, a really good example of this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, motorcycles can be incredibly dangerous. Incredibly and, fun, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, uh, you know, you have to make your own risk assessment about that. Now, I used to work for um, Honda. Uh, in uh, Honda Finance, yeah. um, in motorcycles and power equipment. And one of the things that, one of the additional tasks that I had uh, while I was there was um, was resolving death of customer cases, mm-hmm. uh, which is if if the, the person who the loan was given to dies, then I need to figure out how to either transfer the loan to somebody else or recollect the collateral. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the bike. The bike, yeah. Uh, or the mower or whatever it happened to be. It was mostly but motorcycles. But it was, though. I was going to say, yeah. in this scenario, I well, just imagine Well, motorcycles are just a lot more expensive than... Than mowers, than, yeah. yeah. riding one. <laughs> 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 I don't know, man. Um, I've been on some mowers. But there were ATVs and stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, so we and had ATVs That rate's pretty well. high on those, too, yeah. I would imagine. Um, <laughs> but, so, uh, you know, I had some interest in riding a motorcycle before I had this job. Yeah. Uh, because... Um, it, because it's fun. Because it, I... I think that roughly roughly half of the death of customer cases that I handled during my time there, the person had died on the motorcycle. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And so I got to read a lot of police reports and I, and so that is not for me anymore. There's no way that I will ever ride a motorcycle now. Yeah. There's no way. I'm in the same, like you may remember, I was wanting to get a bike for a Mm -hmm. long time. Like I was big. I was like, oh, I'm going to have my bike. I'm going to have my bike. I I eventually made the decision that just wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing, right? If you still wanted to ride a bike, because I've read all of these things and I know all of this stuff and I see how dangerous bikes are, I don't get to prevent you from getting on a motorcycle. (laughs) Well, and if you try to prevent me, I'm just going to go do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Because I'm that person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's that too. Um, But that's, it's the same assessment here. Just because I'm willing to take more risk from your perspective Hmm. by not vaccinating or not wearing a mask or not, I mean, the whole social distancing thing is kind of stupid. Like I stay roughly six feet or more away from people when I'm before COVID. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Pre-COVID. I was like, get out of my bubble, something man. That I have to, and, and talking about like, uh, you know, tell me not to do something and I'm going to do it. Yeah. I very pointedly do not stand on those little stickers on the floor <laughs> in, um, in, uh, retail stores and so forth. Yeah. Like, okay. So the person in front of me standing on the sticker, I'm going to take at least one step closer to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Just because. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just to spite the system. Yeah. Um you like you putting the sticker on the floor is not going to get compliance out of me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um but yeah, I, I get to make my own risk assessment about this and just because you disagree with me doesn't mean to, that you get to impose your feelings about it on me. Yeah. Well, and nor the, does the government. It's the same way with seatbelt laws. Like that's one that really gets under my skin mm-hmm. because like and and that's used a lot around here to just get stops. Like, yeah. It, it, whether you, honestly, I don't know. I'm not trying to make any accusations. I'm just saying I know people that's been accused of not wearing a seatbelt that had one. <laughs> yeah. But um, like I say, it's it's a way like it, just because you're not wearing a seatbelt, the only person you're putting at risk is yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, it's just that's just the reality. What about your children in the back seat? Well, I mean, I'm going to make my children wear one. <laughs> <laughs> but not everybody does. Well, not everybody does. But or not everybody would, I guess I should say. Yeah. So uh, because you think that uh, children should be belted, does that give you the right to impose your feelings about that on no, other families? No, because it's still your kids. 
Like, I mean, I'm yeah. not going to, I mean, I think kids should wear seatbelts. I think adults should wear seatbelts. I mean, I wear one, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think it's okay for me to make somebody else's kids wear a seatbelt. And yeah. I don't think it's right for the government to step in and make somebody else's kids wear a seatbelt. Yeah. Now, and, and I'm for seatbelts. Like, yeah. It's not like I'm an anti-seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> you anti-seatbelt. <laughs> I'm an anti-seat. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. made the argument. <laughs> well, and I, I should have pulled one of these clips because there's a bunch of them out there, but as uh, particularly in the EU, um, there have been officials talking about how uh, or that the um, the various lockdowns and penalties and, and uh, impositions on people that are unvaccinated have no public health benefit, but they are expressly designed to make their lives difficult enough that they will just comply to the vaccine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they're, we're doing the same thing in this country, or mm -hmm. Biden's trying to with these mandates on um, businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what this is. It's yeah. not public health that he's concerned about. It's compliance. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just, that's the road we're heading down. Mm -hmm. so. um, okay, so there was another little, uh, like, offshoot piece of news uh, that I came across that gives us a chance to talk about some economics. Ooh. Um, about capitalism. Ooh, God, love me some capitalism, man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Tencent uh, is a Chinese company. They're a, um, they make games and other apps. Um, I think that they're connected with Riot Games, like they're a big part of Riot Games for anyone familiar with Riot Games. Um, and their big app is one that runs parallel to WhatsApp uh, called WeChat. Okay. I've heard of WeChat, yeah. Right. None, of the, none of the other stuff I've heard of, but heard of WeChat. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, it's their chat app, like their presumably encrypted chat yeah. app. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, China, uh, where they're based, yeah. um, the uh, Communist Party of China has instituted a new, well, relatively new, um, personal privacy policy. Uh, that they're imposing on all these tech companies about data. Yeah. Um, now that sounds really nice at first, and like one of the big things is that the um, it, that it requires these companies to have in their apps uh, an ability for users to opt out of data collection, uh, at least of certain types, and and so forth. Yeah. Um, and that that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that idea generally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I would choose to opt out. Yeah, I yeah. do. I opt out of everything on Microsoft that I can every time it <laughs> pops yeah. up. Um, and uh, but as as I really kind of read more into this, and I, I hadn't had enough time to to do a real deep dive, and honestly, like some of it is above my tech understanding. Yeah. Um, but another big part of this policy um, is restrictions on. Uh, moving data outside of China. Ah. Um, so uh, th this company, as I understand it, um, was making some deals with other governments, selling user data um, to other governments and com companies from other countries. Um, and um, I mean, what I got out of it is that the Communist Party of China really um, wants to make sure, like, they want that data. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> they don't want data on Chinese people being transferred out of the country where it can be used by other countries to do whatever. Yeah. I don't know what, um, you know, some kind of intelligence, something or other, who knows? Yeah. Uh, they want that. They want control of that data yeah. in China. Well, it's their country. They ought to have it. <laughs> okay. It's not where I thought this would turn. Um, and, and as I was reading, uh, and we'll come back to that. Um, yeah. the, the communist Party of China has actually cracked down uh, over the last year or so on tech firms generally in the country, yeah. um, both foreign and domestic tech firms. Um, it seems to well, like the suggestion from the the um, the people that I was reading is that they really wanted to kind of rein in the power of the tech companies in China. Yeah. They didn't want the tech companies to be a power rivaling the Communist Party of China. Well, and this is going on all over the planet right now. Like, yeah. Because the tech co companies potentially stand to be more powerful than governments in, in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's recognized by these governments. Well, and 
Ours so, included. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. This is definitely something that's that has a, a bit of a fight in the U.S. as well. Um, now, I, I would... It depends on how you define power. Yeah. Because the tech companies do not, at least at this point, yeah. um, and I can't imagine them being able to wield the power to coerce people into doing stuff that they don't want to do, unlike governments. Yeah. Um, no, that's true. Governments ca- have coercive power, but uh, the tech companies wield a tremendous amount of influence and yeah. that's the that's the frightening thing for these governments yeah um or but, but a, that's a potential a, that's, tool that's, which is what the u.s is trying to do with this yeah. and what i think actually china is trying to do with this as well like okay oh, the sure. tech companies have all of this information we will use the tech companies to gather this information for us so that we can use it for our purposes. Yeah. And that's the same. And what the, what's happening in the U S is that they're looking at the tech companies as a way of, of influencing people, yeah. um, with the government propaganda. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's okay. Well, we need to exert enough pressure on the tech companies to make them, make them support our statements Yeah. and suppress alternatives yeah um so that you know they you we we will use the tech company's influence in order to get our way to yeah. propagandize our people oh absolutely you know? um so uh, one of the things here with tencent is as of last week and until the end of the year at least um they will have to submit all new apps and updates to existing apps um to the uh chinese com Communist Party. Uh, I did it backwards. I, I did it the way everybody does. It's hard to get out of that habit. Um, to the CPC uh, for government approval before they can release them to the general public. Ah. Um, now, part of the reason this caught my attention is because I was listening to a, uh, a gaming um, talk show podcast yesterday, um, and they they brought this up, and I was like, well, I hadn't heard anything about this. Yeah. Um, and, uh, now when they brought it up, they were talking about, oh, well, you know, this, uh, and of course, uh, it turns out that Tencent is collecting data on all of their users and, um, you know, just like they, every other company right. out there yeah. and, uh, you know, how terrible though, like, oh, capitalism, you know, it's because of this drive for profits, you know, this capitalist system is killing us all, um, is kind of the approach that they were taking. Yeah. And I, I was like thrown so off balance by that mm. i was just blown away i, I was like first off tencent yeah. i like every other company that collects data on you yeah. you signed an agreement saying that they could yeah yeah like you are freely giving them your data and somewhere in that end user license agreement some somewhere in that eula it says what they can do with that data yeah which is certainly somewhere in there it says that it can sell it to others yeah I mean, yeah. and that's every user agreement out there, every yeah. app and company, like they've all got that. Like, mm-hmm. um, But the important point here, and again, this is the, you know, the difference between the coercive government and the, the um, big corporations, uh, influential, but, you know, the big corporations is that you can opt out yeah. by not using this. Yeah, you like can this use, is a you voluntary can, relationship. You can use another service or mm-hmm. no service at all. Like, yeah. I mean, that, that option is out there. There are alternatives to WeChat. Yeah. There are alternatives in China to WeChat. I mean, yeah. beyond like other Chinese companies that do the same yeah. kind of thing. Um, and uh, so the, the relationship with any of these companies is always voluntary. Yeah. You're not forced to use Facebook. Yeah. I mean, you kind of feel like you're forced to use Facebook because that's where everybody is, but you're not. Yeah. Like, you don't have to use it. Well, and it's crazy with as with Facebook as the example. There's less and less people on Facebook. Like Facebook is not what it used to be as yeah. far as that goes. People are walking away, man. Mm-hmm. Well, and the younger generation just doesn't even care about they, it at they all. They never got on there in the first place. Yeah, it's um, it's all like, Instagram and um TikTok and yep. speaking of another Chinese, yeah, uh, yeah, TikTok's a big one. <laughs> yeah, there's there's other ways to communicate. I still pick on my kids about Trump's going to take TikTok tech away because <laughs> he was going to that one time. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, still a joke in my house. <laughs> um, so, but the the other part of this is that the problem here isn't Tencent and their data collection. Yeah. It's that the Chinese government won't let them continue operating unless they provide that data to them. Yeah. Yeah. And so like the government involvement 
involvement makes it anything but capitalist. <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite. Of, yeah, once you get the government involved, like, yeah, yeah. we're on a whole other road here. And, of course, the last point on that is that these the, the round table of this podcast are three people that literally play games for a living on, or stream games for a living. Yeah. And um, I would like, I challenge any one of the three of those guys to tell me what other economic system they could have that job in. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't think the Communist Party would pay them to, to do that job? Uh, well, if they're propagandizing per- correctly, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they, would, they would have strict scripts to follow. Yes. Like, they wouldn't be able to do it the way they do it now. Yeah, that's certainly <laughs> true. Um, and uh, the so this is the thing that a lot of people don't... You know, if you ask most of the people, especially that have that way of thinking... and. I was just, I was so amazed that they've been so thoroughly propagandized in this country. They're all Americans really? um, in this country that they would see capitalism as such an evil thing when their, their business is so strictly capitalist. Yeah. Like they make a living doing that because they are hardcore capitalists. Yeah. Yeah. In practice, and, if, yeah, if not right. in ideology. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I just, I was, I was surprised that they could. So unironically yeah. make that statement. Yeah. Well, it's because um, they've rationalized it out in their head. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and they have a twisted view of what capitalism is anyway. Yeah. I think what it is is they have a twisted view of what money is. Well. Um, I, I think that's really what it comes down to. I think that a lot of these people that think this way um, at this point are think that you should just be able to do whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. And that, you know, there's so much money out there in the world. Why that should the, you not have some? Yeah, the government should just provide for everybody and let you choose what you want to do, whatever makes you happy. There is a lot of people out there that believe exactly what you just said, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that think that that's, that's the future. Yeah. And, and they may not even be wrong. I mean, we're heading down that road. Oh, no, they're wrong. Well, there, there's, there's economic realities to this that yeah. th- you're going to run well, up against at some point. Well, I mean, we're running up against them now. Yeah. I mean, we just had a couple of years of, of stimulus checks just flowing out. Mm-hmm. And what is our money doing right now? It's <laughs> like, becoming worthless. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. inflation is through the roof. Yeah. Like you can't deny these things. Well, didn't you hear Elizabeth Warren? Though? That's just because these companies are so greedy. Oh, man. Yeah. I think I read you that tweet the other day. Did I don't you? have it in front of me. Yeah. No, I haven't seen you in a week. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah she put out what well, was over Thanksgiving. So we, I've seen you since Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, yeah. Friday we recorded. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I yeah, because it was her Thanksgiving tweet or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just because. So were they not greedy before? Well, that's just it. <laughs> like, exactly. They suddenly became greedy. Yeah, yeah. They suddenly became greedy after Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, and, and after well, trillions of dollars printed. Yeah, yeah. That that doesn't have any effect though. It doesn't yeah. matter how much money you put into the system. Like that's not that doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Well, and 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 that I think is exactly that's the handle right there is that they think that money can money can just be created yeah. and distributed and then people can use that money to get what they want and they can they can get that money for doing what they want. They need to listen to our episode on Venezuela. Yeah, <laughs> which one? Yeah, uh, well, we did a few, <laughs> um, and and that's just it though. Is that the the money actually does have a real meaning? Like, yeah, um, money isn't just a piece of paper that they've printed on. It, it's supposed to represent something of yeah. va- of actual value. Yeah, um, and the, you know the other part of that is there are a lot of jobs that that produce things or are involved in producing things that we need to have. That are terrible jobs. Oh yeah, that nobody would want to do, or very few people would yeah. want to do. Well, trash collector. Yeah, like, I mean, go to your generic one. Mm-hmm. You know, janitor. Yeah, like yeah, who's gonna do that job if they don't like if they're not being paid mm-hmm. to do it? Mm-hmm. Like, who's gonna volunteer to do that job? Yeah, and so what ends up happening is exactly what they tried to do in communist countries, which is assign jobs to people. Yeah. Okay, we need X number of trash men. So you, 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 and you are going to go be trash men. Yeah. And, you know, and that's how it's done. But you can't, there's too many moving parts to any economy. Yeah. And there's nobody that, it's, it's a problem with central planning of just about anything. We're, we're dealing with that now in the entertainment industry. Because like, that, that's like down in the beach and stuff. 
Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there's jobs down there that people just won't do. Restaurants are closing their doors and stuff because they ain't got people to do the jobs. Mm -hmm. And the big reason they ain't got people to do them jobs is because the government's handing out money. Yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, they're not handing out so much money as they used to. They're still handing out some money right now. Yeah. I mean, if you've got kids, you're getting money right now. I'm just saying, like, that's the yeah. reality of it. Like, mm -hmm. um... So, and I just, I, I need to look and see, but I heard that they're going to do another one of those rounds of, you know, just giving out money to parents. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Man. So. Some kid I can claim. <laughs> you need to find you one, man. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's, it's just, the way an economy works is by all of these individual decisions by individuals yeah. to try and maximize their own existence i guess really yeah um and uh there's there's too many things going on there's too many individual decisions there's too many arbitrary decisions by people yeah. things that don't make sense yeah um it makes sense to them but not to an outside observer yeah. and so there's no way that you can have a group of people sit together no matter how smart they are or how great their computers are yeah. um that can calculate into the future how much of everything that you need exactly but the market can do that mm -hmm. freely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, free market can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I mean is a free market. Yeah. yeah. If I say market, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like for now, <laughs> for those of you who really believe in democracy, um, the uh, a real free market system is the most democratized system out there. Yeah. yeah. Like every dollar you got is a vote. Yeah. And it, by the the various votes that everybody's making it pushes the various industries in the right direction. Yeah. Like, okay, people are willing to, to put a bunch of their votes into this one thing. Well, we need to produce more of that one thing so that we can get those votes so, so that we can put them into something else. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if you want to think about it that way. That's an interesting way to think about it. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, we've talked about it before, but I've never really looked at it in that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that's uh, all I really wanted to cover. And I don't know that I, I, I don't know that, I don't know that we hit this ten cent thing like I would like to have. But I, like I said, I didn't have very much time to, yeah, look into this. Yeah. Um, well, we can go into it deeper on another episode. Yeah, I'm, we'll, we'll always hit more economic stuff. There's no way around it. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and just, economics is interesting. Like I don't know. It's yeah, and it's something that so few people like really understand. And I'm not going to say I'm any kind of expert on it, but, it, but I find it interesting. So I've looked at it a lot, you know, I've read a lot about it. Yeah. So, so, um, we talk about, uh, we've talked about Bastiat seen and unseen, yeah. um, and the, uh, broken window fallacy, uh, on multiple occasions on this podcast. And I was listening to, uh, Tom Woods show yesterday, the day before, I guess. No, I think it was yesterday. Um, and I can't remember the name of the guest. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> He's from like Grove City College or something. I don't know. Anyway, right. um, he was uh, talking about some economic fallacies. And um, one of the problems that he presents to his first year economics students mm -hmm. in college, uh, that they very rarely, if ever, come to the, the right conclusion on. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it was a, a real world example of the... Um, of the broken window fallacy in a way, yeah. uh, or at least of the seen and the unseen. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. So I'm going to share it here. Uh -huh. Um, he said, uh, it was like in the eighties, I guess, um, there was a famous, um, airplane accident where, uh, there was a fire in the cabin and they had to come down hard. Um, and, um, like 120 something people died and, uh, including a couple of infants. And when they did the forensics, now I, I can't remember all the details of this, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that's not the kind of thing that sticks in my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Names, dates, places, eh. yeah. uh, but, um, a couple of infants died. And when they did the forensics that they, they found that instead of like smoke inhalation or, um, um, suffocation or, or, uh, burns or whatever that killed the other passengers, the infants died from head trauma. Um, and the reason was that, uh, in the, in the course of the accident, um, the parents dropped the infants, oh. right? And so them hitting the floor, getting bounced Is around from, it. yeah. Yeah. Um, from the turbulence or, or the crash itself or whatever is what, is what killed them. Yeah. Uh, 
So some well-meaning Republican lawmakers uh, proposed some legislation to require um, parents with infants to uh, to get essentially a car seat for the plane yeah. um, for their infants. So <clears throat> um, so they would have to get that like not not that they would have to purchase the the car seat. Yeah. But that they would have to purchase a seat on the plane. But the seat um, on the plane would 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 be like a car seat for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, you know, up until that point, obviously, you know, parents with infants, and the legislation didn't pass, so it's still a case, actually. Yeah, I was going to um, say we don't have those now. So no. um, if you're traveling with an infant, uh, so you got a mother and a father and an infant, yeah. um, you're buying two seats on the plane, and yeah. so this legislation would have resulted in. Um, you have a mother, father, and an infant. You're buying three seats on the plane because you need to purchase the seat for the baby to go into the car seat. The car seat, yeah. Right? Or the plane seat. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Well, however you want to phrase it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so his question to his classes is, uh, if this legislation had passed, why would it have caused more infant deaths than without the legislation? Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. He says, uh, you know, the initial answers that you get are usually like, well, if they don't design the seats right. And so, and he's like, no, 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 forget all that. Imagine, yeah. you know, just assume, assume perfect. They, in, they got it right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect engineering. That's yeah. not the issue. Like, yeah. why would it have caused more infant deaths? And so I'm, I didn't yeah, come I'm, up with it. Like, I'm, I didn't I'm have racking very, my like, brain. I yeah. don't have it. Yeah. I, I think over time, probably you would, you would get it. And yeah. I, I think that I would have over time, too. You know, yeah. it's in a podcast. You don't want to make people like wait too long. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll give you the answer to this next week. <laughs> hey, do the cliffhanger <laughs> thing. Um, so the answer is that uh, it would put um, economic pressure on families with infants, right, yeah. to fly. It would make it more costly for them to fly because they have to buy a third seat. It's essentially fifty percent more expensive now for them to fly. Yeah. Um, and so uh, what? One of the laws that we do know about economics is that the more expensive something is, the, the fewer people get. use it. Yeah, the less you get out of it. Yeah. Right. Um, so if you are traveling somewhere and uh, you would fly, but now it's too expensive, how yeah. do you travel? Well, you're going to take the bus or you're going to drive. Yeah. Something. And yeah. mile for mile, you're something like 35 times more likely to die in a, uh, in a car than in a plane. That makes nothing but sense. Yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, so more people would have traveled by car. There would have been more deaths in the, on the road by car. And so therefore more infants would have died yeah. um, than would have if they'd fly. That's an interesting uh, thought experiment, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, and so then they, he also added that there was some real world data to support that. Oh, hypothesis there is. Too. Yeah. Um, and he's after 9-11 yeah. uh, with all the new security precautions and so forth, it drove uh, ticket prices up yeah uh, significantly i mean i remember that yeah, yeah. more people because that was a big thing more people are driving more people are driving yeah. and so in the months following 9 11 um there was something like 2500 more uh road fatalities wow. uh than they would have than they had projected for that time yeah. um and then uh or that would have followed the trend yeah and um after the prices stabilized that it fell back down to to the projections huh yeah so well, and that's something. So, like you know me, I hate flying. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's just I just don't like it, man. Like it's just a it's a hard thing for me. But like it's weird because like rationally, like I know it's safer in a plane than it is. Like I'm more likely to die on my way home tonight than I am mm -hmm. if I get in a plane and fly home. Yeah. Like I mean, it's just what yeah, because it it'd be like a 15 second flight anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But um, of course, you'd have to wait in security for an hour first. And... Oh yeah, I'd never get there. <laughs> it would take twice as long. But but it's one of those things you don't think like you don't. I, I don't know. I can't rationalize myself into enjoying flying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, so I definitely like time is valuable enough to me that I fly any time. It's going to take me less time to fly than to, than to drive. Yeah. Um, but I don't really enjoy flying that much either. Although I, I do find the time to be more useful Yeah. because uh, if I'm driving, I can't read yeah. anymore. Um, yeah, anymore. <laughs> Not saying that I used to. Nobody heard that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if I'm flying, I can read or listen to podcasts or do something productive where I can't do that when I'm driving. Yeah. Um, and, you know, generally speaking, it saves me time. If I'm flying, it's because it's saving me because some time. Because it saved you time, yeah. Um, but the, the problem that I have is that I, I don't like that I don't have control. Yeah. 
Well, that's that's a big factor. In that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's hard for me to be in a position where I I can't influence the outcome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. but yeah, just got to go get your pilot's license, man. Yeah, I've considered it. Yeah. Except I wanted to fly a helicopter. Oh, talk, yeah. about, talk about talk uh, about risk assessment. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's one that's gonna work. Be worth it, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. so the, here's the thing, though. Like, if you lose engine power in a helicopter, you can still bring it down. Yeah. If you lose engine power in a plane, yeah. not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can bring it down. It's, it's yeah. going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, um, you lose enough speed and it just drops like a rock. Whereas yeah. the helicopter, like the actual falling, actually forces lift the, because the, it forces the propellers, the propellers to, turn. to move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. I guess uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Unless you got something to add? No, man. I think we covered it. I hope so. This is, uh, well, I mean, we got essentially an hour out of a podcast that we had no plan. <laughs> yeah, we didn't really have a whole lot going in. <laughs> um, so, so I hope it was. So we covered it all. <laughs> yeah, hit everything, all the high notes. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, try Rittenhouse Rye, and they are not sponsoring the podcast. But if they want to, they're more than happy. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I will, we will accept we that will, sponsorship. We will take their money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we will talk about them every podcast. <laughs> this is a product I believe in. Yes. Um, so if, if anybody's out there that's a representative of Rittenhouse Rye and, and you well, want somebody contact to contact us, just, yeah. just give us a... You, what, Michael your, at the Liberty Mike <laughs> dot com. There, there you go. Um, yeah. And uh, so we uh, plan to be... Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing weird next week, right? Nothing I can think of. I can't think of anything either. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be back in a week. And in the meantime... Um, follow us on Facebook, uh, subscribe on iTunes, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like, and share, um, tell your friends. Um, and, uh, of course, if you have any comments or questions or things that you want us to read or comment on or whatever, um, you can always email me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, and, uh, whenever I get back into writing again, I will post them at the website, which is the Liberty the liberty mike.com <laughs> it is important that that article be there yeah. t-h-e the liberty mike.com <laughs> i've been told by a friend that if you just go to liberty mike.com there is something else there that is not us <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and uh so um you'll uh yeah you'll hear from us again in a week when we hopefully have more news and we finally get this right and in the meantime try to stay free life short live free ciao later